although expected to be a game changer, the TB2 UAV seems to be losing ground on the battlefield. According to the Washington Post, in the current Russia-Ukraine conflict, the Russian efforts, although not completely dominant in the air, but Ukraine's TB2 UAVs can make a difference either, as they are very vulnerable to Russian air defenses. In an analysis in the Washington Post, the Turkey's TB2 UAV will not give Ukraine the necessary advantage for a number of reasons. First of all, time is of the essence. But in Turkey, the production of TB2 UAVs is very slow, which means that Ankara cannot supply the necessary quantity to Ukraine on time. Second, even if the Ukrainian army effectively uses the TB2 drone, it will have to confront the two strong air defenses of the Russian air force. And as spring began, the mud in Ukraine gradually disappeared and the ground became harder, which could allow the Russians to advance faster. TB2 UAV has been successfully used in the battlefields of Syria, Libya, and especially in Nagorno-Karabakh to carry out precision attacks, causing the enemy heavy losses. The TB2 UAV is highly appreciated by the Western media, but there is a fact that in these battlefields, the enemy's air defense system is too weak even non-existent, so the new TB2 UAV has the opportunity to show its power. In the Syrian and Libya battlefields, the TB2 UAV destroyed low-altitude mobile air defense systems such as Panzer S1. But in the Ukrainian battlefield, in addition to the Panzer S1, it also have to deal with Tor M1, Berg M2, and many other supporting weapons. In Ukraine, according to the official information of the Russian Defense Ministry, in more than a month of hostilities, the Ukrainian army has added at least 8 TB2 UAVs, bringing the total number of TB2 UAVs in Ukraine to 36. And now, the number of TB2s of the Ukrainian army is only one, and absolutely cannot threaten the ground forces of the Russian army. One weakness of the TB2 UAV is the limited range. Unlike some modern American UAVs, the TB2 UAV is controlled directly by a ground command station instead of via a satellite like the US long-range UAVs. Therefore, TB2 airfields and control station must be brought close to the front line and make them easy targets for cruise missiles and the Russian effort. Analysts say that TB2 will be effective in low-intensity conflicts, but will not be effective on the front line with Russian forces. Obviously, Ukraine will need drones with the longer range, controlled via satellite. But even so, Russia is capable of jamming satellite signals. Last but not least, Russia is not yet actively using its drones. Russian troops are currently trying to fortify the newly captured territories in the eastern Ukraine. If Russia deploys a sufficient number of UAVs, it will entirely control the ground and sky of Ukraine. The opportunity for a TB2 to show is very difficult.